Good day students, welcome to MathGodServe.com. In this clip we're going to be going over how to factor higher degree polynomial equations. Alright, before we get started, let's go ahead and review um, two important facts concerning factorization of binomial squares. So let's recollect the following. The first has to do with the factorization of a case known as a difference of squares. Okay, I'll refer to this as dose, difference of squares. Now the difference of squares formula is as follows. If you have a square minus a square, this can be factored into, so a square minus b square, does not c square as you might think, this factors into a plus b times a minus b. Okay? The procedure involves just expressing this difference of squares as the sum and the difference of the square root of the squares. So you root the first one and root the second one and then you express the roots as a sum and a difference. Okay, So that's how we end up with um, this scenario right here. The second uh, case I would like you to keep in mind has to do with the sum of squares. Okay, we have the dose, this is the SOS, S -O -S. Um, if you have a square plus b square and you want your factored state to have just integral coefficients, this remains the same, okay, because it's prime. If you want to factor it further, then you have to make use of um, imaginary um, terms, which is not applicable to the problems that we're working on in this presentation. Okay, let's take a look at um, some problems. The instructions are for us to factor completely. Number one, let's say we have um, x squared minus 4 equals 0. This is a quadratic binomial. Now if you notice we have a square and a square and a minus, this qualifies as a dose. This is a difference of squares, okay? So to factor it, we'll simply take the square root of the first term and the square root of the second term and then we'll express the roots as a sum and a difference. Okay, so this becomes x plus 2 times x minus 2. The order of the factors doesn't really matter since um, multiplication commutes. So that goes the answer for the factored state for question number 1. Now number 2, what if we were to factor um, the quartic trinomial x to the fourth minus 5x squared minus 36 equals 0. Now we have a trinomial here so we cannot factor by grouping since it is an odd number of terms. So the question is can I break this down into four terms in such a way that I can factor out um, a GCF from the first two and the last two in such a way that I can factor by grouping. To see if that is possible, we're going to use the X game to attack the middle term and then see what results after that. In this setup that we have here, A is the coefficient of the fourth degree term, 1, B is negative 5, and C is negative 36. AC goes on top, B goes on the bottom. AC is 1 times negative 36, which is negative 36, and B is negative 5. Now let's play the X game. What two numbers multiply to give us negative 36 and add to give you negative 5? So think about all the products, they yield 36. If you use 9 and 4, negative 9 and positive 4, that should suffice. Now what we're going to do is replace the middle term, that's our target. We're going to replace the middle term by th these two coefficients, okay? So we're going to have x to the fourth power 
minus 9x squared plus 4x squared minus 36 equals 0. Now we'll proceed to break it down the center. All right? So we have the first two and the last two. We can now factor by grouping. Now let's see. What's the GCF here? What can we factor out from the first two? If you take a look at the variable terms, x to the fourth and x to the second, just simply extracting the one that has a lower power, that, that is automatically the GCF, okay? There's no coefficient, so we can pull out any numbers, just variables. There's no coefficient with the fourth degree term. So um, let's go ahead and factor out x squared, since that's the smaller power of the two. And then what are we left with? If you factor out x squared from x to the fourth, you're left with x to the second power. This is accomplished by subtracting 2 from this power. And then 9, if you factor out x squared from x squared, you're left with 1. Okay, or x to the zeroth power multiplied by 9 is just 9. Now let's take a look at this term here to the right of the partition. We have a coefficient for x squared here, namely 4. So that's what's going to be coming out. And no variable here, so we'll just focus on factoring out 4. Always bring down this middle sign, so this is positive. We're going to be factoring out positive 4, which means that no sign change will be happening here. Anytime you bring out and factor out a negative, these two terms will um, experience a sign reversal. Now, um, if we take out 4 from 4x squared, we're left with x to the second power. If we take out 4 from 36 or divide 36 by 4, we're left with 9. Now let's pause and check to make sure our factorization is going well so far. Take a look at the quantities in the parentheses and ask yourself, are they identical? The answer is yes. What does that mean? It means that our work is correct so far. Okay. Now we'll proceed to factor out the identical quantities in the parentheses, x squared minus 9. And then the terms left on the outside will be clustered together in their own parentheses. We are, we're asked to factor completely. So the question now is, are these two quantities factored completely? And the answer is no. One of them can be factored. Can you see which of these two quantities can be factored completely? As the first one, right? The first one is a difference of squares. You have two squares, x squared 9, and you have a difference. So this is a difference of squares. x squared plus 4 on the other side is, an, is a SOS or SOS. We have a sum, and then we have two squares. Okay, so this one is prime, whereas on the other hand, this can be factored. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, factor out the difference of squares. Okay, so to factor this out, we'll take the square root of the first and last term and then express it as a sum and difference. So we have x plus 3 times x minus 3 times x squared plus 4 equals 0. And ladies and gentlemen, there goes your final result. All right, now let's take a look at um, question number 3. Looks a little bit different from what we had before. We have x to the fourth power plus x to the third minus 9x squared minus 9x equals 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor completely. Now, if you take a look at all the four terms, is there a greatest common factor that can be extracted? This 9x can be expressed as 9x to the first power. So they all have variables, namely x. So if you extract the lowest degree variable of x, 
from every single term that will be the GCF, okay? So the GCF is x to the first power since x to the first power goes into every single term. If we carry out this factorization, we'll be left with x to the third, subtract one from each power, so third, and this becomes x to the second minus nine x, minus nine x to the zero, which is just nine times one, you're left with a constant equals zero. Okay, we happen to pull out a GCF from the original problem. Now let's shift our attention to the cubic polynomial with four terms in the parentheses. Can we factor this one? Since we have an even number of terms, we can attempt to factor by grouping, okay? So what we'll do is we'll divvy the polynomial down the center Let's take a look at the first two. Um, can I factor out anything from the first two? Absolutely, you can factor out x to the second because that's the lower of the two exponents. So we have x times factor out uh, x squared. And we're left with x plus one. Now minus nine x minus nine, we can Remember, always bring down the middle sign, you pull out a nine, and you're left with this negative nine x divided by negative nine is just positive x. Negative nine divided by negative nine is positive one equals zero. As you can see, the quantities in the parentheses are identical, so our answer is correct so far. Now let's bring down the x here, do not forget that. Factor out the identical quantities x plus 1 and then what's left on the outside x squared minus 9 gets its own parenthesis x squared minus 9 equals 0 now have we factored every single quantity completely the answer is no notice what we have here x squared minus 9 this is a dose again this is a difference of squares. We have two squares and a difference. So we can apply the difference of squares factorization formula in factoring x squared minus nine. Okay, so we have x times x plus one. These are prime, they cannot be factored. And then in the, this case here, we root the first and the last term. And then we express the roots as a sum and difference. Final answer is x plus 3, the sum of the roots, times x minus 3. And this is our final answer. All right, let's take a look at another example, question 4. What if we were to factor x to the 8th power minus 82x to the 4th? plus 81 equals 0. Now as you can see there isn't any GCF that can be pulled out of the original problem. However we have a trinomial scenario um, which means we cannot factor by grouping except we try the X game. Okay? Can I um, break this down or express this trinomial as a 8th degree polynomial with four terms? To do this, we're going to use the x game again, as we did um, in problem number two. In this situation, a is one, b is 80, uh, negative 82, and c is 81. ac goes on top, b goes on the bottom, ac is 81, and b is negative 82. Now let's play the X game. What two numbers multiply to give you 81 and add to give you negative 82? It's 1 and 81, right? But in order for the signs to work, we're just going to negate both of them. All right, so back to this um, eighth degree trinomial here. We're going to replace the middle term with these two numbers we came up with using the x game, so we'll have negative 1x to the 4th minus 81x to the 4th 
plus 81. Okay, set that equal to zero. We'll now break it down the center and factor by grouping. Okay. Now from the first two, we'll pull out x to the fourth power, the small of the two powers, and we're left with x to the fourth minus one. Now in the next two, the two terms to the right of the partition, you always bring down the middle sign, which is a minus, which indicates that signs will be flipping upon factorization. We're now going to factor out 81, that's the GCF. And if you factor out negative 81 from negative 81x to the fourth, you're left with x to the fourth power. If you factor out negative 81 from positive 81, the signs flip, and you're left with 1 equals 0. Our work is looking good so far because the, the quantities in the parentheses are identical. Okay, so we are got now going to factor that out. We have x to the fourth minus 1. And then uh, what's left on the outside, we will cluster them together in their own nice little parentheses, x to the fourth minus 81. Okay, now are we done factoring? The answer is no. These two are difference of squares. Okay? How do we know that this is a square? Well, any number raised to an even power is a square. Okay? Because the power is divisible by 2. So x to the fourth is a square because 4 is divisible by 2. x to the fourth is 4. The same reason. So these two are squares. 1 is a square. 81 is a square. We have minuses between those terms. So these two are doses. Difference of squares. Okay, let's factor out the first one. So we just take the square root of the first term and the second term. Express that as a sum and difference. So x, x to the fourth, if you root that, is going to be x. Let's write it as x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 1. When you're rooting it, what you're doing is you are dividing the power by 2, okay? That's the procedure for um, rooting. Okay, on, on the right side, the same process. Take the square root of the first and the last. Express it as a sum and difference. This becomes x squared minus 9 times x squared plus 9. Okay? Now, are we done? Have we factored this polynomial equation completely? The answer is no. This right here, x squared minus 1, this is a dose. x squared plus 1 is a sos. This is a dose, and this is a sos. Okay, hope you can see that. This is a difference of squares. This is a sum of squares. Difference of squares, sum of squares. The sums are prime. You cannot factor this. This one cannot be factored. But the difference of squares can be factored. Okay? So let's go ahead and factor the difference of squares and we'll leave the sum of squares alone. x squared minus 1 is a difference of squares, so you root the first and the last. Express the roots as a sum and difference. So we have x plus 1 times x minus 1. You can write it in reverse order. It doesn't really matter. And then you bring down the x squared plus 1. Okay, I just brought the x squared plus 1 down here. And then the x squared minus 9. How do we do that one? We use the same procedure. Uh, take the square root of the first and the last term square root of a squared plus b squared and express the roots as a sum and a difference. So in this case we're going to have x plus 3 times x minus 3. You can also write it as x minus 3 times x plus 3. Since multiplication commutes, the order in which you write it does not matter. Okay, and then you bring down x squared plus 9 right there. And guess what? This is the final answer. Okay? Let's go ahead and box that. 
So that is how you um, factor polynomials of high higher degrees. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your study of polynomial functions, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this tutorial or any algebra concepts in general, just place it in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More clips and support resources can be found on mathgotserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.